To me, passing and court vision has always been one of the toughest skills to train. The game moves so fast, there's so much going on, you're pretty much relying on other players as well. A lot of the time it just happens and you gotta understand the patterns in the game. So a little backstory, I spent the last month out in Europe training hundreds of athletes, but also just learning, soaking up the style of play in the basketball culture. And one thing I noticed was decision making and just being ahead of the game. Compared to the US, I'm not gonna lie, the level of decision making and court vision at every level is just higher. And amongst other things, I think a lot of this stems from so many players playing football or soccer as one of their first sports. And if you look at it, the sports are actually pretty similar, spacing and movement wise at least. So here are five things you need to understand on the court to become a better passer based on soccer principles. I promise you guys, you won't be disappointed by this video. So the first thing to understand is that we shouldn't just be relying on seeing open teammates. We should be seeing them before they get open, as that play is happening. Many times when you wait till a teammate is open before you pass, it's already too late. Soccer happens quickly, but basketball happens even quicker in my opinion, just a smaller court. So even though seeing a wide open teammate and making that pass may work sometimes, it also causes a lot of turnovers, because by the time you actually make that pass, that defender is back. So we gotta be a step ahead. We gotta be monitoring where defenders are, which ones are falling asleep, which teammates are making a run to the basket, all that. So although it seems like players have eyes in the back of their head sometimes, it's really just a product of constantly surveying the court or the field beforehand to understand where players are, to the point where they know these patterns so well, they don't even have to look to know. Second thing we can learn is how valuable it can be to pass directly on the catch. Look at these plays. They're literally making this pass on the first touch because they already know where to go with the ball. It's not like, let me control the ball, then survey, and then make a decision. No, nah, they're being proactive and seeing the play unravel before they even get the ball. Same thing with what I call zero second decisions in basketball. So many times the ball gets swung to us, and since there's already chaos and a disadvantage, the best time to drop a simple dime is just right away. But this takes a constant feel for what's going on, not just the slow mindset where you catch, survey, and then make a decision. Third is understanding the timing to lead teammates. In soccer, the field is so big and the passes are often so long that these have to be unbelievably precise, both accuracy-wise and in terms of timing. In basketball, if we can understand this concept and comfortably lead players to the basket or whatever space they're entering, it makes it that much easier of a bucket for them. But this requires a super quick subconscious calculation of the player's speed and how to meet them perfectly with the ball, which is clearly something we need a lot of experience with. And I've noticed that players who grew up playing soccer get this down much more easily. But of course, it's never too late for you to get out and start trying to lead your teammates perfectly. Fourth is the give and go concept. Of course, this concept isn't specific to soccer at all. We learn it in basketball as well at a young age, but I see it done so much more than in basketball. And it's possible because of a natural human instinct. No matter what the sport, you're probably gonna relax or get in a bad position after your man passes the ball. So if you're constantly looking for this in basketball, it'll be there, I promise. Draymond and other Warriors have killed off of this for years, as does Jokic, who times these up perfectly. It's not too early, so it gives time for that defender to actually get out of position, but it's also never too late to where they recover. It's a beautiful thing to watch. With the 22nd timeout, Ray Thompson's got the crowd buzzing, but he sets up step nice. And then fifth and final is that the majority of the time, we need to create disadvantages to open up teammates. In other words, we probably got to get past the defender, moving towards the rim, so that other players will step up and help, lose track of their man, all that. But the best way to do this is efficiently and in the flow of the game. Rather than stopping the ball movement to break down defenders, attack closeouts hard to get downhill. Come off simple pick and rolls. Use handoffs and off ball screens. If you can do this and get into the teeth of the defense, it creates a constant chaos where now you have the entire defense scrambling. And if your teammates are positioning themselves right, it's easy dimes all day. So if you guys take these five principles and apply them and work on them and think about them as you're playing, I promise you guys you're gonna see crazy improvements in your court vision. You're gonna start seeing the game ahead of time. And this is a big step for your game. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out our virtual academy, our Instagram, all of our Grow the Game camps that we're doing this year, and just stay tuned with the journey.